Good morning, informal. Um, I'm gone today, obviously, so this is why we're doing a little video. Um, so tomorrow, remember, you have your tests on all the triangle things. So um, we are going to do some of these problems together in your packet, and then you'll have the rest of the time to work on the packet in class, which you will easily get done. I have no questions there. And then um, on Classroom, I linked a quizzes, and if you do that, I will give you um, a bonus point or two, or maybe three, on your test tomorrow, okay? But let's just start off with doing these problems in the packet together, and yes, I want you to write down what I write down, because you're going to turn it in for points, um, and we will go from there. So it says, number one, name the triangle. I don't even know if we ever fully talked about this, so this is all my fault. But when you name a triangle, we use a little triangle symbol for triangle, and then you use your vertices to name it. So I can pick any order. I'm just going to go triangle PQR. PQR. You could have done any order. You could have said triangle RQP or any variation. It doesn't matter. Just you use three angles to name your triangle. Uh, we've gotten pretty good at this next part. It says Name the side opposite angle Q. So let's all find angle Q. Here's angle Q. If I go across my triangle, what side do I hit? Well, I hit side PR. Opposite angle P. Let's erase this a bit. Here's angle P. What side is across from it? QR. And then our last one, if I look at angle R and I go across my triangle, I hit side P, Q. Um, number three says, what is the sum of angle Q plus the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle R? Well, we know that all three of our angles in a triangle have to add to what? 180 degrees. Then remember we talked about how to name a triangle. Um, remember you can name it by its sides, scalene, isosceles, or equilateral, and by its angles, acute, right, obtuse, or equal angular. Um, we're not going to do a, I'll just do the first one with you, and then you guys can come back and do the other ones. But if we look at number four here, if I name it by its sides, do I know anything about our side lengths here? No, we have no indication of anything, right? So then by default, we know it's scalene. It's all sides are different. And now if I look at our angle measures, well, this one's kind of obvious, right? We're given this little box here, and we know that that means 90 degrees, so that would be a right. So a right scalene triangle. So when you come back, you're going to have a name for both its sides and its angle. Side and angle. Okay, let's jump down to number eight together. <clears throat> it says find the indicated angle measure. So we are looking for this guy right here. Well, don't forget we said that all angles in the triangle add to 180, so we're going to take 180 and subtract 40. And remember that box right here means 90. So in your calculator, if you take 180 minus 40 minus 90, we get... 50 degrees. Okay, I think you should be okay on 7 and 9. Um, let's flip the page and let's do number 11 together. Let's do 11 together. So this guy right here. So if I just look at this triangle, we have these two tick marks right here telling me it's isosceles. And remember, isosceles have base angles congruent. So if this angle right here is x, then I would know this angle right here is x. And now it makes our problem a little bit easier to solve because I would know that 180 is equal to 125 plus x plus x. And now we just simplify. So I'm drop down my 180 my 125, and I have x and then x for how many total x's, guys? Two. 
subtract over your 125, and we should get 55 equals 2x. And then when we divide out, we find that x equals 27.5. I know we got a decimal. That's okay. Not a big deal. So 27.5 degrees is our x. I'm going to scroll down a bit here so we have some more space. There we go. Uh, oh, just kidding. I wanted to do 12. JK. Reverse, reverse. Let's do 12 together quick. I should be able to reach. Okay. Let's do 12. This seems kind of goofy too. So we want to find what this angle is here. But we can't just directly find it right away. So what we need to do first is I know that this angle right here and 103, since they make a line, we know that they add to 180, right? So I'm going to take 180 minus 103. 180 minus 103 is 77. So this angle inside here is 77 degrees. And now we have a problem like earlier. How do you find a missing angle of a triangle? We just subtract from 180. So now I'm going to take 180 minus 67 minus 77, and now I'll get what angle Z is. So angle Z is now 36 degrees. 36 degrees. Erase this a bit here. Um, let's do 13 together because 13 and 14 are similar, so I'll just pick one of them. I'll just do the first one here with you. So now we're kind of going the opposite. Um, this time we want to find out what this outside angle is, but first let's figure out what this inside angle is. So really, if you just kind of block out this whole picture over here, we just have a regular triangle, right? How do you find the missing angle of a triangle? Well, we subtract from 180. Like always, so 180 minus 70 minus 50. If we crunch that out in our calculator, we get 60 degrees. So now that this angle right here is 60 degrees, what does 60 degrees and this angle here have to add to? Well, since they make this straight line, they have to add to 180. So 180 minus 60 gives us 120 degrees. 120. Um, 14 is the exact, exact same. So just follow um, what we wrote down and you should be okay. Or if you want to be fancy, there was a little trick that we learned. You remember right, our trick was that these two angles here, if we add them together, it equals this one. So if I take 70 plus 50, I get 120 and that's what we got. Again, I kind of like doing it the way we did before, but this is the trick, the shortcut. Um, but I don't think we always remember that, so I just like to do what we always know. On 15, um, I'm not going to do it because I think you guys should be able to because we, we got really good at these. Remember, what do all three of our angles have to add to? They add to 180. So you guys come back, figure out what x is, and then you got to plug back in to find the measure of each angle. But I know you guys can do that because you're good at algebra, so we'll just keep moving on since I don't want to take up all of your time. Okay, on 16 through 18, I think that's it. Let's see here. 16 through 18, or you're just trying to find the variable. We'll just do 16 together because it's just right here. Um, well, what kind of a triangle is this? It's isosceles because I have two angles the same. And what do we know about the legs of our isosceles triangle? Well, they're equal. So I can just figure out what x is by setting them equal to each other. So if I subtract over my 5, I get 14. Divide by 7, x equals 2. Done.
Okay, 17 and 18 should be okay for you. Um, let's turn the page to number 19. So this is what we did um, towards the end of last week. It might have been on Friday. After, no, this Thursday. This Thursday. Um, it says determine if a triangle can be formed with the following side lengths. So this is when we use those pipe cleaners, right? And what did we notice in our patterns with the pipe cleaners? That the two smaller legs had to add and be greater than our third leg. So if I look at 19, well, all my legs are the same, so it doesn't really matter which two I pick, but I'll pick these first two. So I know four plus four has to be greater than four. Well, four plus four is eight. Is eight greater than four? Yep. So that is a triangle. That one worked. Okay, let's try 21, just because we're here. So this time, what are my two smaller legs? My two smaller legs are five and nine, and I want five and nine to be greater than 15. So five plus nine is 14. Is 14 greater than 15? No, not true. So not possible, not a triangle. Okay, you come back and try 20 and 22. That should be okay for you. Let's come back to listing our um, angles from smallest to largest. Smallest to largest. Okay, so remember we have to look at our side lengths because the smallest angle is across from the smallest or shortest side. So if I look at my, uh, my side lengths here at 14, 22, and 26, which one is my smallest? My shortest length is 14. Now what angle is across from 14? It's angle R. Now I'm just going to erase so it's a little easier to see what's going on. So we already used 14, so we can cross that one off. Now what would be my medium side length? Our medium side length would be 22, because 22 is smaller than 26. Now what angle is across from 22? Well, it's angle Z. And now we're only left with 26, which is our longest side. Now what angle is across from 26? Well, that would be angle L. Yep, and remember to put the angle symbol out in front, and then you only need one letter. So that is naming your angles from smallest to largest. You come back and do 24 later. Let's skip to 25 and try naming our sides. Okay, remember when you look for your sides, you have to compare your angles. So first let's find this missing angle C. So remember, when we look for a missing angle in triangle, we take 180 minus 95 minus 44. And what do we get? We get 41 degrees. So let's put that in our triangle so it helps us. So angle C is 41. Now we're looking for our smallest angle, because remember our smallest angle is across from our shortest side. So if I look between 44, 95, and 41, we find that angle C is our shortest. Now what side is it across? It's across from AB, that whole side. Remember you need two letters and the segment bar on top to name the side. Okay, so that was 41. Okay, now what's my medium size angle? Our next size angle would be angle A because it's 44. If I go through my triangle, what side do I hit? I hit BC. And then our largest angle would be angle B. And angle B is across from AC. There we are. So we just went from shortest to longest. Okay, you come back and do 26. Um, let's skip to the next set of questions. And our next set of questions are using the Pythagorean theorem. 
our favorite. I'm just gonna go like this for a second. Why don't you guys write this um, somewhere so you just remember it on your packet? C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That is our Pythagorean theorem. Maybe put it by the directions or something. I don't know. Um, let's do 28 together. So remember, the biggest and most important thing with the Pythagorean theorem is that our C squared is always our hypotenuse. That's our C squared. And remember um, the trick Mrs. Kwame talks about, she says that little box is like an arrow which points to our C. So I know that 5 is my C. And since they're telling us this side over here is B, then we'll call it 3 our A. And now let's just plug in. So what is our C? Well, we labeled C as 5, so we'll have 5 squared is equal to, what did we label A? 3 squared, and our B is just B squared. Now we got to crunch out these numbers, or we have to, excuse me. So 5 squared is 25, equals 3 squared is 9, plus B squared. We have to get rid of that 9, so we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. 25 minus 9 gives us 16 equals B squared. And then lastly, how do we undo something squared? Well, we know we take the square root. So we find that B equals 4. Good work, team. Okay, I think you guys will be pretty good with the Pythagorean theorem, so let's move on to our next section, our second to last section of our packet here. Um, it says use the distance formula to find the distance between the two points, round to the nearest tenth. Okay, how about up by the instructions, like just above it, why don't you guys write the distance formula so it's here in your packet. So remember it's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Remember that is our distance formula. And we'll just do 31 together here. So remember, let's label our ordered pairs because that makes plugging in so much easier. So we'll have x1, y1, x2, y2. And now we just plug in a big square root. All right, what did we label x2? Well, we labeled x2 as 3 minus our x1 is just 1 plus now our y2 is negative 2 minus our y1, which is 4, squared. And now we simplify. So now we have to subtract away. So what is 3 minus 1? 3 minus 1 is just 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 4 more is negative 6 squared. Now we're going to square our numbers. 2 squared really means 2 times 2, so we get 4 plus negative 6 squared really means negative 6 times negative 6. So negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. And remember, you'll always get positive numbers in this step. It doesn't matter if there's a negative here or not. It's always going to give you a positive number. Um, and then if we take 4 plus 36, we get the square root of 40. And now you just got to find that button in your calculator for the square root of 40, which I forgot to do, but I'll do it quick so we have it. Square root of 40 is 6.3. That should be our answer. All right, folks. And our last section says, use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is acute, right, or obtuse. Okay. So why don't you guys cross this off? We're not doing 37. We never talked about medians. And then in this blank space, let's just write out our three possible options here. So for acute, c squared is less than a squared plus b squared. Um, c squared, that's a few. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We know that is a right triangle, because that's when it works. And then if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, it is a juice. All 
All right, we'll just do the first one together and then I'll let you work on your packet. Um, remember, the most important thing is C squared has to be your biggest number. So out of 10, 24, and 29, we see that C has to be 29 and then the other two don't matter, but so I'll just call 10A and 24B. And now we're gonna plug in. So my C is 29, so I'm gonna have 29 squared. And then remember, we're gonna leave it blank because I don't know what it is, so just leave a space. And then we'll have 10 squared plus 24 squared. Okay, 29 squared is 841. Again, leave your space. We don't know what it is. 10 squared is 100. Plus 24 squared is 576. Add those two numbers up. So at 841, I'm still going to leave my space. It's blank to 676. Well, how does 841 compare to eight, um, 676? Well, we know that 841 is bigger than, and we always want to eat the bigger number. So that means our triangle is obtuse, right? Because it matches that symbol there. Okay. Thanks, guys, for being champs and following along. Go back, work through the packet. Have Mrs. Kwame or the sub check with their keys to make sure you're doing it right because tomorrow we have a test. So I want you to know that you're doing it correctly. And then if you have time when you're done, go on to classroom and do the quizzes, right? Might as well get those bonus points. It's extra practice anyways. Um, be good for the sub. Have a super day and I will see you tomorrow.